because I'm share with me Vanderbilt different Vanderbilt different okay okay howdy partners friends family not family not classmates either if you're my future classmate please click off because this is so embarrassing oh uh, hi my name is Alyssa and I got to Vanderbilt University alongside 10 other schools and I thought I make a video describing how I got into Vanderbilt and like my whole there's something in my eye college process because I watched a lot of these videos when I was getting into college or applying so I thought I'd make one too because I think I'm pretty average I think I'm pretty not there in the head so maybe I could give some of you some hope because I know I need it Honestly, I don't even know how I got in. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I tried to do like too late, but I also started really late, aka the beginning of my senior year. Vanderbilt class profile, stats, my stats, not important by the way. List of activities, letters of rec, personal statements, standardized test scores, what I wish. I'll be giving you some insider edition tips. Vanderbilt's class profile consists of their acceptance rate, which is 9.6%, pretty low, which is like one in one in ten people get accepted. But I applied early decision, so it was like one in five, I don't know. And their average SAT score is 1510. And my score was not that at the time of applying, so you're chilling and I applied for human and organizational development which is basically like how I'm just gonna get right into my stats because I know that's what the people want so Vanderbilt does this like holistic review you'll hear if you've been in contact with like your admissions counselor probably a lot of schools tell you that they do a holistic review holistic means they want to see that you're balanced in various aspects of your life so the five things that my admissions counselor told me that they look for are rigor of curriculum success in your overall curriculum list of activities letters of rec personal statement and standardized test scores but the year that i applied 2021 test optional was a thing so hopefully they'll continue doing that because i don't think test scores are an accurate representation of so I have my handy dandy MacBook Pro here, computer, so I can read off my stats. Okay. Yeah. In eighth grade, I took Algebra 1 and I got an A. The summer before ninth grade, I took Health and PE and I got an A in both. And in ninth grade, I took English, Geometry, Biology, Arts and Communications Core, Business Core, Spanish 1, and Participation in Democracy slash Modern History of Hawaii half and half and i got a's in all of those 10th grade summer the summer before 10th grade i took algebra 2 in person i got an a and i took world history and pe online also got a's in those in 10th grade i took u.s history english physics digital media tech marketing spanish 2 and trig and pre-calc and i got all a's in those as well and the summer before 11th grade, I took marine science, best class of my entire life. In junior year, I took AP Psych, AP Calc, AB, um, Chemistry, Accounting, Honors English, which was American Lit and Expos Writing, Yoga, and Film. I got all A's junior year, except for, I think, American Lit. I got a B, which was half, which was really dumb. Was it my fault? You just don't get the best teacher sometimes. No, just kidding. Um, as you can see, I only took two APs and one honors, and the rest were crews again. Take classes that add value to your life. And then the summer before 12th grade, I took intro to computer science online, and I got an A. And senior year, I took AP Lang, AP Calc BC, public relations, finance, 
AP Econ, yoga, and I had a free TA period, all A's again, and honestly, for the most part, I had all the same teachers, or mostly the same teachers. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, because I was in two cores, so. Oh my God, there's a bug on me. Number two, success in your overall curriculum. Okay, so I had a 3.8 unweighted, GPA out of 4 and 4.019 out of 4 unweighted because of my 1B and you see you see these other people and they they they'd be having like 4.5 5.0 GPAs couldn't be me and that's because of my whole core class situation so I was in media core my freshman and sophomore year or I couldn't take AP classes basically freshman and sophomore year so my GPA could have been higher but it wasn't because, yeah, the highest I could get freshman and sophomore year for 4.0. And also, I didn't max out on AP classes, which I really don't recommend. Like, you think you can handle it? Uh, maybe you can, but not for me. I'm basically saying that you don't have to max out on APs. You don't have to do super, you don't have to max out on APs and be super smart to get into a good school. I'm living proof living proof because i'm share with me vanderbilt different vanderbilt different okay <laughs> okay whatever and my rank was one out of 400 weighted anybody who has a 4.0 gets number one self-explanatory oh and additional fact or the school i went to is ranked 1440 1440 1446 na nationally and we're the number two best public school in hawaii so because maybe college admissions counselors look at like your school's ranking and if your school is ranked high then they'll expect higher of you but i don't know don't ask me i'm not a admissions counselor like i said no idea how i got in but <laughs> disclaimer proclaimer <laughs> Proclaimer. <laughs> I feel like you don't have to do like so much stuff. Like you don't have to start a nonprofit. I'm just saying that because I didn't do it, but I don't think it's necessary to like participate in nonprofits and do stuff that aren't really meaningful to you. The sun is like, that aren't really meaningful to you. Like if you just do it to do it because it looks good. I don't think it's worth it. Like do stuff that you want to do and do them well and spend time perfecting your craft. I'll do a separate video of me reading my list of activities with the descriptions because I think I worded them really well but I'm embarrassed to say them out loud. DM me if you want the unlisted video. Minimac, which is like the biggest thing ever for me because I've been doing media since I was in the fourth grade. So I'm so thankful I went to a high school that still had a great media program. Senior class committees, Luau and Spirit Week. I don't know, I just feel like there was lack of spirit my senior year. So I wanted to put together Spirit Week and I did that and it went really well. And we were supposed to have a senior luau, but that fell through because COVID-19. Compu Girls by ASU Arizona State University, which was three hours a week, six weeks a year, which is basically this thing we learned about cybersecurity, how to stay safe online. And we had to do this project thing and show it to everybody short term, but very beneficial in my life. And I did gymnastics slash tumbling well i did gymnastics when i was younger and then i switched over to tumbling because i thought i was gonna be in cheer and stay in cheer during my high school career but no and i was in deca all four years historian and my school shop manager and i won some awards barely but i won some awards and seven hours a week 48 weeks a year and then science club I was a historian, one hour a week, 40 weeks a year. It was like not a very high commitment club, but we did do a lot of stuff, you know. When we did stuff, we were like doing them for a long time, yeah. And I was on the math team, four hours a week of competition for six weeks a year. So like once every two months, once a month, something like that, I don't know. Yoga, very big part of my life. 10 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. Tutor slash study groups, seven hours a week 48 weeks a year and then i play the guitar one week week one week a year 52 weeks one hour a week 52 weeks a year sorry 
And then dog walking four hours a week, 52 weeks a year, uh, which I will explain in the unlisted video that I create. You're welcome. <laughs> I think Letters Over played a huge role in my acceptance. So get it from teachers that you've had a long time, even if they don't know you well, or if they do know you well, better for you. And I asked my AP Calc teacher, which I have for two years, He's also the advisor for the math team and I got a five on the AP Calc AB test. And I also asked my AP Econ teacher and she's also the DECA advisor of four years and my business teacher for almost, for three out of the four years. I got all A's in her class too. They know me well, I know them well. My big recommendation for this one is to ask early, like ask on the first day of school, have your brag sheet and personal data sheet ready. I'll link examples to those below. Get teachers who you know will say good things about you. Yeah, so colleges usually ask for one humanities, one STEM teacher, something like that. Oh, ask more than you need. So you can ask like, I don't know, ask five teachers if you want because not all of them are gonna say yes. And then AP teachers highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be AP, but AP because, what is it, reputation. Personal statement. So I wrote my um, my Common App essay about yoga and anxiety. I will also be reading that in a separate video unlisted because I'm embarrassed to share that with the whole entire world. And for my extracurricular essay, I wrote it about me being a historian for clubs and my memory, not that deep. But for your personal statements, I, would, I recommend um, watching like TikTok, accounts like gohar's guide and i don't know yeah you just gotta say speak your mind don't write what you think other people want to hear or like i feel like it's so much easier to speak from your heart and from your experience than like having to fabricate all these stories and to seem impressive it's way better if you just speak about who you are and what you are you heard it all before it has to be a good balance of like showing off and a good balance of your values. Okay, before you write your essays, make sure you get to know yourself well. Like what are your values? What do you stand for? There's a lot of questions on Reddit that you can go through that you can use to reflect on your whole entire life and go through an existential crisis while writing your common app essays at two o'clock in the morning. Like a bunch of resources for you to use, so you should use them. But also, be true to you, use your language art skills, switch up those sentence structures, and have other people read your essays, even if they're like super um, cheesy, super embarrassing. Like I would read my stuff over and over again and I don't think it was super polished, but then somebody also pointed out, oh, you should fix this, you should fix that. You don't have to listen to them, of course, but it's always good to get a third opinion. You know yourself better than anybody else, period. Third opinion comes later, like when you're almost close to being done already. So I'll make a separate video of me reading my essays if you want to see that. Standardized test scores, okay. This is where it gets embarrassing. So I didn't submit test scores because the only test score that I had at the time of applying to Vandy was my ACT, which was a 25. I didn't study for it, I didn't really care because I always thought, oh, I'm gonna have another chance to take the SAT before I apply. No, my test got canceled five times and I studied for three months, I think. Yeah, so I didn't submit a test score. I went test optional, of course. But afterwards, I took the SAT and I got the first time I took it in December, I got a 1400 and then I got, took it again in March and I got 1470. I don't, I think that's good, but I, I don't. I feel like if you wanna do good on your whatever, it's all about how much you study because I would study like half an hour every single day or maybe two hours, two or three hours because I had a lot of time in the summer because COVID standardized tests are like pay to win like i don't know i guess you could be like naturally smart or your parents could force you to study for the sat or if you didn't have guidance like me then utilize your free resources uh, on the ap exams i took two during my junior year i got a five on the ap calc exam four on the ap psych exam not transferable so i'm gonna take psychology again <laughs> i don't know how i got into Vanderbilt university I couldn't tell you what I did specifically to get in. I also forgot to say, uh, take everything that I said with a grain of salt because everybody's experiences are different. And I think luck definitely did have a lot to play with my acceptances to my colleges and 
just again trust yourself trust that everything all the hard work you put into these 12 years will pay off and you will end up where you are meant to be like also college is not for everyone so also take that into account listen to yourself pray manifest do whatever you need to do just you got it like you will end up where you need to be where you're meant to be and i live by that so much so don't go into this college admission admission season with too high of expectations don't expect anything at all just like have fun with it <laughs> like that sounds so bad but that's the truth like the more fun you have with it i think the less stressed out you're gonna be and yeah you're just gonna have a better time overall it's not that serious like literally it's not that serious but it kind of is because four years but you'll be fine whatever you choose to do you'll be fine you'll find a way you'll figure it out but yeah believe in yourself okay bye just be a good kid if you're not it's never too late to start try your best good luck have fun but if you need help reach out to me i'm very much available never too late to start never too early to start because once the common app opens going and going and going and going and going oh biggest thing ever that i forgot to mention is to believe in yourself because it does really go a long way like you will doubt yourself every single day every single word that you type out you're gonna be like oh my god i don't know if this is the right thing to do it is it is if you have any questions concerns leave them in the comments those are my stats those are my tips and suggestions it feels very general but like my biggest advice is to just be yourself like that's what I live by all four years. Be myself so I can optimize my high school experience. And it's not selfish because everybody's on their own path, honestly. You just gotta do what's right for you. And I wish you all the best of luck. And I'm so excited. So excited for all of us. See you later. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe. Anchor down.